Step into the enigmatic dimension of Paranormal M, your portal to the extraordinary. Don't forget to subscribe, drop a comment, turn on notifications to embark on a journey into the paranormal. We hope you're ready to be spellbound. I think a demon paid me a visit. So about three years ago, I was living with my mom for about a year after a relationship breakdown with an ex. I hadn't had anything like this happen to me before, but I've had quite a few paranormal experiences. Here's the backstory for context. Since the age of about 10, I used to see what I will call a woman periodically throughout my childhood and into my teens. I'd actually seen her out of the corner of my eye, peering around walls or door frames, and she would just watch me. When I was younger, it used to freak me out, but I spoke to my mom about it, and she said that it was probably just somebody watching over me. So, that's what I believed for a very, very long time. Especially as this woman had never made me feel scared, threatened, or done anything besides poke its head around a corner and just watch. No one else ever even saw her, and as soon as I'd turn my head to try to see her, she would disappear. I'd turn away again, and sure enough, the head would appear out of the corner of my eye again. This happened over the course of about 12 years with no real routine. Sometimes I'd see her twice in a week, then I wouldn't see her for six months. Then I'd see her like maybe once a month and then not for a year or so. I don't really remember, but it was always the same, just watching. It's worth noting that this happened in multiple houses and places where I've lived. So flash forward to 2021, height of the pandemic, and I'd split up with my then girlfriend and moved back to my mom's for about a year. I don't remember how long I'd been there at the time that this happened, but it sure as hell made me get my own place a lot quicker. So like most people, I tend to sleep on my front with one arm underneath my pillow and one leg bent as this has always just been more comfortable for me. I've never slept on my back, and I've never woken up sleeping on my back either, always on my front or my side. So anyway, one night I go to sleep as normal. I put a YouTube video on in the background, lights off, sleeping on my front. My bedroom door was always shut for privacy. When I suddenly wake up, instantly I can tell something is up. Because I'm laying on my back, half propped up on my pillows. Almost as if I'd fallen asleep reading a book or on my phone or something. My arms were at my sides and the first thing I saw was my bedroom door wide open. Now the layout of the house was sort of split into two. You walk in the front door and either turn left or right. To the left immediately was the living room with the connecting hallway leading to my mom's bedroom. To the right would have the bathroom directly in front of you, kitchen on the right, and my bedroom directly opposite the kitchen on the left. My bed faced the doorway and allowed me to see into the hallway and kitchen, when fully open anyway. We lived in a block of flats, apartments for my American friends, so there was a bit of light coming through the frosted glass in the front door from the communal stairwell, which slightly illuminated the hallway and the kitchen. Now as I've just woken up and I'm already confused as to why I'm awake and why my bedroom door is open, as my eyes adjust, which only took a few seconds given the light, I could see a figure standing in my doorway with its back to the kitchen. Now as soon as I looked at it, it moved to the right, as if heading towards the front door and living room. Immediately I started to feel my heart rate rise because did I really just see something? As I'm sat there processing everything that's happening, and the off feeling that I had, this thing slowly comes back into view and is just standing in my doorway watching me. Now, I don't know how I knew, but my brain instantly made the connection to what I'd seen growing up, and I knew this was the same thing I'd been seeing 
just watching me when I was younger. Except now I felt scared, I felt threatened. I couldn't focus on what the body of this woman or thing looked like because all I could focus on was the dark yellow eyes that it had. Now, given that it was dark and I usually wear glasses, as I'm very short-sighted, so the fact I could even see the color of its eyes really brought me to attention. I've never felt primal fear before this moment. I've heard and read stories about people saying they experienced primal fear and just assumed it was another level of scared. I've never been so wrong. I felt like prey. I honestly felt like I was about to die. That's when I started crying. Silently, though. I couldn't make any noise. It just wasn't coming out. I couldn't move either. People I've told this experience to say that it was sleep paralysis, but I know for a fact it wasn't. So as I'm trying to shout for my mom and nothing but air coming out, this thing starts walking or floating, not even sure. But it made its way into my room. It made the ten feet from the doorway to my bed, then moved around to the far side of my bed. It was a king size, and I always slept on the right side nearest the door. It must have had some wrappers or something on the floor because I could hear it rustling the plastic or stepping on whatever it was that was on the floor. I'm still pretty much paralyzed and crying with fear at this point. This thing just stood next to the left side of my bed and just watched. Now the reason I know this wasn't sleep paralysis was because I managed to roll onto my right side facing away from whatever was now standing next to my bed. And I lay there for maybe three or five minutes. It felt much longer than that at the time. And then I blacked out. People wake up from sleep paralysis, not black out, right? That's the last thing I remember before waking up like usual on my side. Bedroom door closed, daylight coming through my curtains. Everything felt normal. Now, obviously, I had trouble sleeping for about two weeks, terrified about seeing that woman again, but just as soon as I started to forget about it and started sleeping regularly again, I was randomly woken up again. This time was different because I woke up on my front in the recovery position. This is how I'd normally sleep. Now, I was in a deep sleep, had been asleep for hours. But my immediate reaction as soon as I opened my eye was to look over my shoulder behind me. I saw a face, inches from mine, shoot back into the darkness. I just rolled over and went back to sleep because I didn't want to deal with whatever it was. I don't know if it was the same thing that walked into my room a week or two previously, but whatever it was made my natural instincts kick in. Wake up, look for danger. I must have felt whatever it was right next to me, as as soon as I saw it, it just backed away into the darkness. I haven't seen the demon woman or had anything similar happen since. I'm hoping that whoever or whatever has been watching me since I was 10, I'm now 25, got as close as it wanted to and has decided to leave me alone. It's been two years roughly since this happened. So I'm praying that whatever it was stays away. Hoof prints on the ceiling. When I was in my early 20s, I lived in this one bedroom apartment with my brother. He had the bedroom, I slept in the living room. He had been living in this one bedroom for a couple of years prior with his ex-girlfriend before a messy breakup. I moved in shortly after while we were waiting for a two-bedroom to open up in the same building. The building itself was built in the 70s. Each unit had been updated several times before we got there. Before this, I knew there was something in there. I had spent a lot of time there prior. Before I moved in, we had taken videos of the cat acting silly and running around. Then on review of the video that we saw are chasing orbs. I had taken a photo of myself in the mirrored closet doors that lined the hallway. And when I looked behind me in the photo, 
I saw a face over my shoulder. After I moved in, it got worse. I've never had sleep paralysis before in my life. I was all of a sudden having more of them while living here. Ones of people peeking through the front door and being violently shaken. One night I was falling asleep and I thought I heard my brother in my room call my name. But when I woke up, no one was there. I was sitting in the living room and I have a view of half the dining room on one side of the kitchen. And on the other side, I can see the front door. The kitchen itself is behind a wall. I was on the couch and in the living room and I saw movement going into the kitchen. Then my eyes snapped to the front door. The figure came out from behind the wall. It was a tall mist with a black body and a white head. It came right at me. I felt a cool burst of air hit me. Then nothing. Some time had passed. No more figures or faces. But then one day we noticed over my head where I slept there was a very distinctive dark hoof print. When we tried to scrub it off the ceiling that we left, it was just left a big patch where it was because we had to scrub so hard it left a mark in the paint. We moved out of the two bedroom in the same building. All the occurrences stopped. Strange Happenings at the Farmhouse When I was a kid, probably around 12 or 13, my mom moved out to this farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. Like we couldn't get internet in the middle of nowhere. It was a property with 13 acres, a dilapidated barn and a horse corral that had overgrown weeds. And of course, the main farmhouse. At night, there were no lights other than the one in the front yard to show that our electric was working. My room had a window and faced the horse corral. One night, I woke up in the middle of the night. It was a full moon. I looked out my window, and besides one of the fence posts of the corral, there was a girl standing there. She was wearing a nightgown and rubber boots. She was facing my window. From there, things got worse. The TV we had in our basement would turn off and on randomly. My mom would hear an old radio playing in the middle of the night. My stepmom would go out to the barn to smoke. And one time she was in there, she and her girl, or rather she heard a girl say her name. She thought it was me, but at the time I was at my dad's house in the city. When I would wake up in the middle of the night to pee or get water, I would feel like someone was watching me. If I looked into our living room, it felt like someone was watching me through the window. One day, my stepmom and I were walking down the hallway. We both saw a nightgown go into the bathroom. No one was in there when we checked. This all came to a head when one night I woke up randomly again in the middle of the night. I used to keep my room door open, and it would look out into the hallway of our house. I was laying in bed unable to fall back asleep. When as clear as day, I heard a girl whisper my name. At first, I thought it was a noise my sheets made when I moved. I tried recreating the noise, but it didn't work. Then I looked out into the hallway, and standing in my doorway was a dark figure of a girl wearing a nightgown. I stared at it, unable to move. I turned on my bedside lamp, and no one was there. It took everything in my body to run down the hallway into my mom's room where I slept for the night. For unrelated reasons, we moved out of the house shortly after. What did I see in the Umpqua National Forest? I encountered something with my then boyfriend, 25, in the woods a few years ago. We were on a road trip down and up the west coast. I wanted to stop to drink from my favorite cold spring. This was in the Umpqua National Forest. It was getting dark, but we were on a bit of a time crunch as I had a flight from Seattle in a few days. And I'm a very experienced hiker and camper, so I wasn't super concerned. This was early March. 
So there was also about three feet of snow on the ground, and we had to park the car a little bit further and hike a little bit more into the springs. When we got close to where they were, it was getting very dark. I had a headlamp, but it was hard to find the proper trail in the dark and snow. We ended up on the top of the spring rather than the bottom. My boyfriend, bless his heart, started trying to hang over the side of the icy cliff with my water bottle despite my protests. I basically yelled and said it was, I was calling it. This was too difficult and some good water wasn't worth the potential to get hurt, lost, especially in frozen woods. We had a bit more difficulty navigating back out, as it was pitch black at this point. As we're hiking off trails back in the direction of the road, I was climbing over a fallen tree when I saw it. Standing what must have been nine feet tall, on the fallen tree with me, was some sort of thin hooded figure holding its hands together and facing me directly. I immediately was filled with a sense of dread. As horrible as it is, I'm used to seeing things like this. I simply called to my boyfriend and said, We have to move faster and get out of here now. We got back to the road and the entire way I felt like we were being followed. Just beyond where I could see in the dark. I was basically power walking down the road in the snow, terrified. My boyfriend was confused and irritated. We made it back safely. I apologized for scaring and confusing him, and for being so short with him. And I shoved that experience far back into my head, until I remembered it recently. What was that thing? I study folklore as a hobby, but have no idea what it was and can't find any answers when looking to the area. I have a ghost in my room. I'm a teenage girl who shares a room with my sibling. I'm usually the only one in the room because I'm a bit of a hermit and choose to do my own things. Usually I sit at my desk and draw digitally or do homework or play games with friends online. A few months ago I felt a weird presence. When I was younger I would sit in the kitchen and play video games, but I always felt like someone or something was watching me. I told my grandma and she always tells me that it was probably just trauma and I should get off. But it never felt like that. So back to present day, all the weird shit I experienced as a kid kind of went away for a few months. But now it comes back. When I came close to a picture of myself my grandma put in my room, it would fall when I got close to it. I never knocked it down and it usually only happened when I was alone. I do also have a little bit of sleep paralysis, but it never happens during the night. Weird stuff also seems to follow me to school, but I don't ever remember it, so I can't really use any examples. I jokingly named the ghost Steve, but ever since, it's always seemed to go away. I'm also growing up in a religious household with a lot of Bibles, so since I have a Bible in my room, I could have noticed that and got scared. I don't know, honestly, that's just a theory. I'm not scared necessarily because he seems nice. I've thought of buying a Ouija board and see if there's an actual ghost or if I'm just paranoid. So what should I do from here? I don't want to return, but I also don't mind it since it doesn't directly mess with me. I also hear my name being called like my grandma's calling me, but when I reply, my grandma says that she's never called me. I think that may be a doppelganger, but I could be wrong. This happened over Monday to Wednesday at an Airbnb. I'm honestly still kind of shocked as it was my first experience and on Halloween. I'm in Mount Vernon, Illinois at an Airbnb. This place is already off the second you walk in. It's old school, but trying to be modern. Private message me if you want details, and I'll show you photos of this place, give you the address, if I can find it. 
The first day I got there, my friend Michael and friend Kyle had already been there for a couple of days. And they said that this place was haunted. So I arrived, and the first day was completely normal. I'm doing my average smack talking, saying, Oh, what's a ghost gonna do, scare me? Laughing my ass off at them. The first day wasn't really anything. So I'll skip to the night when things got interesting. Michael and Kyle work for the same company. They had this Airbnb for a work trip, so they were asleep by 1 a.m. But I was up until 3 or 4. And around 3.30, almost 4 a.m., I'm in the kitchen. I hear our pool table being played. One stick would smack a ball, then another like as if a normal match of pool was going on. I freak the fuck out. I go to Kyle's room because he's the closest room to me. He's asleep and I'm still hearing it at this point. Michael's room is next to the pool table room. But I thought, what's a ghost really gonna do to me? So I went over there and nothing. Same everything. I was baffled to say the least. I went to bed at this point. I was just shocked that that was my first ever experience. Day 2 Tuesday, October 31st. I wake up home alone. Kyle and Michael were already off to work. They work for Seven Brute Coffee, if anybody knows what that is, but I get up to shower, change my clothes. I'm in the living room watching TV, but my phone's dead and I have no charger because me and Michael share one. But he needs it more than me because he has to work and take calls. Around 11 or 12, I hear this loud stomping upstairs from one side of the roof, and it goes from that side to another side, and fast. I ran out like I was in shock, but I go back in because it's around 35 degrees at this time, so I'm not out for that long. I try to keep my composure, but I was hearing vivid crashes and bangs around this house. I went outside just for some fresh air, not even ghost-related, and the attic light was on. But the places I was hearing the stomping would have literally had been somebody climbing on the roof. Because the attic was weird. It only went over one room, then the rest of the house was normal roof. After so long of this happening, I just got comfortable with it and I sat in the living room, turned 60 days in on, and just sat there for three hours watching. Then my friends got off work, listened to whatever was in that house, make insane noises. The energy was just so strong it felt like I could feel it inside of me when I walked into the house after my friend got off work. Nothing really happened. We got drunk, so ghosts didn't really matter when you're shit-faced. And Wednesday was checkout day, so I didn't have anything happen that day either, but I just felt like I needed to share this with someone, as it was my first experience. Bubblegum-esque spirit. So I'm not entirely sure where to post this, but I figured here was as good as any. It's kind of a long story, so I'll try to keep it as short as possible, and I'll give as much information as I can. Any similar experiences or anything that might help me interpret what I saw would be awesome to hear about from anyone else. I know the title may seem a bit odd, but it'll make sense later in the experience that I had. Plus, it might catch eyes of a few people who might have had experienced something similar. So in 2004, when I was three years old, I lived in a three-bedroom house with my mother, my stepdad, my baby sister, my aunt, my aunt's husband, and their newborn baby. Now my mom, stepdad, and baby sister shared one room. My aunt and her husband shared another room, while me and my baby cousin shared the last room. I don't know why it was set up like this, but that's how it was. So anyway, even though I was very little, I still understood how to carefully pick up and hold a baby. And on this morning, I decided to pick up my baby cousin from his crib, take him into my mom's room to wake her up so we can watch cartoons and eat or whatever my little self had in mind. When I picked up my baby cousin, there was what looked like a pink bubblegum that was stuck to his head, back, arms, and legs. This freaked me out for some reason, so I sat him down and quickly ran to my mother's room, woke her up, told her that the baby cousin had gum on him. Confused, she followed me to the bedroom to check on him. 
She picks him up, then immediately she starts freaking out and wakes up all the adults in the house. As she picked up my baby cousin, I saw what looked like the gum snap, and it was no longer connected to him and almost seemed to disappear. My aunt and mom are crying, panicking, and calling every person they can think of while the men try to calm them down. I don't remember how, but my baby cousin had passed away, which is what caused the panic. It's definitely a very tragic and awful situation that happened, but as a three-year-old, I had no idea what was actually happening. The whole time I'm asking them about the bubblegum, and they either ignore me or are very confused by my question. Once other people arrive, I tell them about the bubblegum that I saw and was once again ignored or they were confused. Eventually, since I was being ignored, I stopped bringing it up. Well, after a while, I was able to talk about it with my family once I was older and understood what death was and what had happened. I once again told them about the weird pink bubblegum stuff that I saw. All of them remember me talking and asking about it, but none of them ever saw it. There wasn't any of that on him or his mattress. All of them think or speculate that I saw him or his spirit leaving his body and moving on. I feel like it could be explained by that somehow. Maybe a bunch of bubblegum got him, but why did no one else see it? Every time I tell this story to anybody at all, they all say that basically they mirror what my family said that I probably saw his spirit leave and move on. I know the whole thing sounds super weird, and I feel like I sound crazy typing it out, but I remember it all very vividly, and so does everybody else who was there. Except they didn't see what I saw. I always wondered why. If it truly was his spirit, it was pink and looked like gum. I don't know where else to put this story, so I figured I'd put it here. If anybody else knows basically anything related. I'd love to hear it. Haunted Family I'm 25, and my family is haunted. Notice I said family and not house. The house I've grown up in most of my life was built by my mother and no one besides us has ever lived in it. I have many stories to tell about growing up that I'll post on here, but I'll start with this one. One night I was around 16, and my mother and I were both sleeping on couches in the living room. I don't remember why, but it was probably because the bedrooms had more frightening encounters than the living room. Anyways, the couches sat opposite of each other so my mom and I could see each other. I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, but my mom is the polar opposite. She wakes up to the slightest of sounds. Around 1 a.m. my mother woke up. She didn't know why. She immediately looked at me just to make sure I was okay. A mom instinct, I guess. For as long as I can remember any time my mother wakes up in the middle of the night, she's always gone room to room to make sure my siblings and I are breathing. She specifically checks to make sure our chests are rising and falling. I don't know why exactly she does it, but it's always been a very serious thing for her. She has a deep fear that we'll just stop breathing in the middle of the night. I don't know why. So anyway, she woke up and glanced at my chest to make sure I was breathing. I was sleeping on my back, but my chest wasn't moving at all. My arms were slightly twitching like they were being weighed down by something. My mother tried to get up but couldn't. She said she couldn't move her body at all. She said that she did the only thing that she could think of and started praying. Softly at first, but gradually louder. She said within seconds that she watched as a black mass of shadow lifted off of my chest and disappeared. Pretty much as soon as it was off of me, she watched me gasp for air and then begin breathing normally then roll over and splay out like I usually do in my sleep. She barely slept that night. She didn't tell me about any of it until the next day when we were at a restaurant away from the house. What really scared me is that I had yet to tell her about the nightmare I had that night, in which I felt like I was suffocating. 
Our families dealt with things like this for as long as I can remember. But we don't know as if it's all of us that's haunted, or just one of us has something attached to us, and it just attacks everybody nearby. Cemetery Event, Virginia City, Nevada, circa 1979. Used to be a believer when I was a kid. I've debunked every event and encounter except one. Still can't explain how this happened. Family road vacation during the summer of 1978 or 79. I was about 10. My mom and dad drove us kids everywhere. This event happened in Virginia City, Nevada. We had a great time touring the town and shops. I was thrilled by the western style shootout on Main Street. The loser had squibs in his torso that exploded blood and he fell near my feet. I was surprised, then proud to have dropped fake blood on my shirt. It was a ten-year-old boy's idea of an awesome day. My dad took me and my younger sister to the cemetery. I think we were killing dime while my mom just took my younger brother to the restroom. We stayed very close to my dad. Cemeteries were spooky to us kids then. I was doing the math on the dates, trying to determine the age of the death. Soon I became further spooked by all the kids and babies in the place. The event happened at one large family plot. I was looking at the headstones of the kids when I suddenly fell forward onto a grave without warning or intent. My dad yelled at me to stay off the graves. He already warned us that it was taboo. I still can't explain how or why I fell. My sister still remembers because it scared her. She said I simply fell forward as I fell asleep. Except she could see that I was still awake. I don't recall tripping, losing balance, fainting, feeling a force or a push or a pull. I didn't lose time, I simply fell, completely conscious onto the grave of the dead kids. Scared the shit out of me. That's it. Still don't know what happened. Haven't debunked my sister's belief that it was paranormal. While I no longer believe in the paranormal, I don't have an explanation yet. Virginia City, Nevada, Boneyard, circa 1979. I used to believe in ghosts when I was a kid. Aside from Star Wars, my expertise was ghosts, along with messy Bigfoot UFOs and the spontaneous human combustion. This was after I lost interest in Legos and drawing dinosaurs. As a kid, I had many paranormal encounters, UFO sightings, and even did my own search for Bigfoot during every hike in the woods for scouts. Once I entered high school, I turned more to science and girls. All of those many paranormal encounters when I was little I've since debunked. That ghost I saw running toward me in the fruit orchard behind our house turned out to be a white sheet hanging from a branch. It was left behind by a migrant worker during the harvest. Those Ouija board scares at my best friend's house? Well, his dad admitted to moving the thing around just to watch us boys lose our shit. His mother still retain, or maintains her house, it is indeed haunted though. The ghostly shadow I saw walking in my best friend's house after one of the worst Ouija board scares turns out to be from a damaged lampshade that was spinning slowly. I've debunked every sighting, event, and counter except for one, and I'm 50 years old now and I still can't explain how this happened. Paranormal Event Virginia City, Nevada, Boneyard, circa 1979. We enjoyed a family road vacation almost every year when I was a kid. For example, we drove from California to New York State when I was two, just so I could meet with my East Coast grandparents. During the summer of 1978 or 79, I was about 10. My mom and dad drove us kids from California to Yellowstone, then up to Mount Rushmore, down to Mesa Verde, don't know how to say that, Mesa Verde? 
Our dad never stopped moving. Five minutes to get out of the car looked the Grand Canyon. Then it was back on the road to reach the next postcard destination. This was his idea of a great time. On the way back home from Mesa, we stopped in Virginia City, Nevada. That's where I once believed I experienced a paranormal encounter. We had a great time touring the town and shops of Virginia City. It was just like any old west town I'd seen in all of my favorite cowboy movies. I was thrilled when a western-style shootout happened on Main Street. The loser had squibs in his torso that exploded fake blood, fell near my feet. I was surprised, then proud to have a drop of fake blood on my shirt. Wouldn't let my mom wash that shirt for ages, but was a ten-year-old boy's idea of the most awesome day ever. At one point my dad took me and my younger sister to a cemetery. I think we were killing time when my mom took my younger brother to the restroom. We stayed very close to my dad. My sister held his hand. I was trying to be brave, so I didn't. Cemeteries were spooky to us kids then. Anyways, I was obsessed with the birth years and death years and fairly good at doing basic math in my head. So I was very focused at each plot, crunching the numbers on every date listed to determine the age of death, probably calling out my answers. Our very road-weary dad would grunt his approval in response and walk to the next plot. My enthusiasm dimmed when I realized just how many women died in childbirth. Their babies had the same death dates as their mothers. Soon I was silenced by the overwhelming population of kids and babies in this place. The event I'll never forget happened at one large family plot. I was looking at the headstones of the kids when I suddenly fell forward onto a grave without warning or intent. My dad yelled at me to stay off the graves. He already warned us it was taboo. I still can't explain how or why I fell. My sister, who was seven or eight, still remembers because it scared her. She said I simply fell forward as if I f had fallen asleep. Except she could, still, I was so, she could still see I was still awake. I don't recall tripping, losing balance, locking knees, fainting, feeling a force or a push or a pull. I didn't lose time. I simply fell completely conscious onto the grave of the dead kids. Caught my fall with both hands, and frozen in fear for a moment, staring at the ground at the bottom of the headstone. Picture me mid-push-up with my knees on the ground, frozen, shaking, scared to look at the headstone. I don't remember standing up. It really scared the hell out of me. And that's it. Still don't know what happened, having debunked my sister's belief that it was indeed something paranormal. She fully believes in ghosts and thinks I was pulled toward the grave. I used to believe the same. While I no longer believe in the paranormal, I don't yet have an explanation for what happened to me in Virginia City Boneyard back in 1979. I guess that was a retelling of the story before this. On to the next one. My house is haunted. My house has had at least one person die in it. But there is two ghosts that we know of, at least. And some ghost cats. First, the ghost cats. When I was younger, I would tell my parents about how I would see cats. But I would be pointing at walls or a ceiling. But I was the only one who ever saw them. We also have seen ghost figures that look like cats. There's also been times me and my family have felt cats jump onto our beds and walking on us. But when we look, there's nothing there. For the human ghosts, there's a man and a woman. Some of my family members have felt someone touch them while they're in the shower. They also have heard voices while in the shower and the voices that they hear, male. Other times, not long after my grandma died, my sister heard the sound of her slippers walking around we didn't have the slippers. My sisters had her bedroom door opened multiple times while she was asleep, and no one was there, and no windows were open. We've also had something move around. At least I remember the most was when I was asleep and woke up and one of my toy elephants with its trunk up was moved, and one of my bed, well, it had been in my closet, 
My grandma had always loved elephants, put their trunks up specifically, and she had a collection. So my guess is she moved it, but... Of all her ghosts, they seemed to be friendly. There was also a time I woke up in the fourth or fifth grade one day, and my arm was next to my shoulder, and there was a mark that looked like someone had branded my arm. A couple days ago, while I was home alone, I was trying to feed my cats and dogs when I saw a black figure run out of the corner of my eye. And when I looked, no one was there. My mom was home waiting before she had gotten to work, and she heard my dad clear his throat. But later she realized that my dad hadn't been home for a couple of hours as he had gone to work. That's all that's happened. But if anything else happens, I'll update this. If you have anything that's happened, I'd like to hear your stories. My Ghost Story When I was 17, I lived with my single father. He rented a house that was once a single-room schoolhouse. This was later converted to a house that had a few rooms added over the years. We lived outside of a small town on a gravel road. As one might expect, the old home would crack and pop, but strange things would also happen. My bedroom had windows that opened with a hand crank. My dad traveled for work a lot, so there were many nights I would be home alone. On multiple occasions, I woke to the window cracked open, with no explanation. It wasn't particularly easy to open. It didn't really make sense that it would do it on its own, but I never really thought much of it and would crank it closed. One evening, my dad and I were sitting on his couch. It was a couch where each and had built-in recliners. I'm guessing they meant it was a couch where each end had built-in recliners. It's probably 10 or 11 p.m., and we're just silently kicked back on each other's end. We were watching some show on TV, and as I'm sitting there, I see a woman completely white in color walk across the room and into my bedroom. Assuming I'm just tiredly hallucinating, I shake it off. A moment later, my dad sits up and says, This might sound crazy, but did you just see a figure walk into your bedroom? Freaked me out immediately. Called a cousin and asked if I could come crash at his house and left. I returned home to no issue. I never saw this figure again. Whenever people would find out where I lived, it was coming to get a response asking if I knew if that house was haunted. I lived in that house until I graduated high school, and my dad moved out a few years later. Always felt a presence in the house, but nothing bad ever happened. My dad likes to bring it up from time to time, and is definitely one of the strangest experiences of my life. Weird Experiences I rented a flat in central London. It was marketed as a one-bedroom, but you could not really fit a decent bed in the actual bedroom, so I made the living room my bedroom as well as a living space and the bedroom my office. Only the bathroom window opened, all the others were locked shut with no key. This is important later. The first weird experience started quite mildly. I had not long moved in, and it was nearing Christmas, so I was wrapping gifts for my friends and family as you do. I was writing gift tags in red pen. I realized I needed more su- cello tape? Hmm, never heard that before. I needed more cello tape, so I popped across the road to a shop called Woolworths. I left the pen in the middle of the gift wrapping paper and tags when I went to the store. On arriving back, I for some reason couldn't find the pen. I looked everywhere, but nothing. Went out to meet friends for dinner, and when I got back, there were now two red pens exactly where I left the first one. I passed it off as me being rushed. Next episode happened a few weeks later, just into the new year. It was a cold night, and I was at the other end of the living room doing whatever I was doing on my laptop. It was really peaceful, and I could only hear the sound of the cars going by and the music that I had on in the background. All of a sudden, there was this big whoosh sound, and all the windows opened at what seemed like the exact same time. This now made me alert that something was up, 
but nothing else happened. Closed the windows, but didn't lock them. Next instance, my ex was visiting. He was tired and wanted to lay down while I sat once again at my laptop. The time had passed, and he started telling me to stop playing with him. I asked him to repeat, as I was not paying any attention. He stated once again, stop playing with my hand. I replied I was not. I looked over and told him to open his eyes. It looked like someone was squeezing his hand. Not hard, but more of a gentle squeeze. This, of course, freaks us both out, and we decide to stay at his that night. Returning home the next day, I was walking to my front door, and the secondary keyhole felt like a gale-force wind coming through it. I thought that maybe I had some windows open, so I went to go back in. It was calm, no windows open. When I went back out again, checked the keyhole, it was calm. The final time before moving out was one that caused a few friends to never return. We were watching our monthly movie. This time was my turn to host. I always choose a horror movie. The evening went quite well. Quite an enjoyable movie. We were all chatting and realized that there was a clicking sound. We had no idea where it was coming from, but we followed the sound. We finally ended up in the bathroom, where we noticed the washer machine wash selection button was turning on by its own. We initially thought it was a fault in the machine, but when I went to touch it, just the dial stopped and when I stepped away it wouldn't turn again. One of my friends screamed. It was not needed. I managed to grab the dial, spin it myself, and didn't turn again. Not long after this, I decided to move. Not because of the experience, I just needed more space. No idea if the people living there are having a similar experience, but I've always been curious. I've tried to check the history of the building, but no one found anything of value. I don't believe in ghosts. I'm a medical student, 21 years old, and I took admission recently, attending eight hours of lectures, including practicals, a hectic schedule. We were accommodated by hostels, but I preferred to stay in a rented house along with three other classmates. We rented a three-bedroom apartment. We had classes from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. For the first time in my life, I saw cadavers in anatomy practical classes. We were taught to dissect them. The smell of chemicals, formaldehyde, is unforgettable even after leaving the dissection hall. As all of our day was busy, we were unable to prepare food at home, so for a few days we ate at hotels, and then we decided to hire a maid. Our apartment is located at a hilly area in Shillong, Magalaya. So the maid asked that if somebody is able to pick her up from the bus stop, which is like a half a kilometer from our apartment, that she'd be willing to come. We had bikes, so we didn't hesitate much. We told her that we need our food to be prepared once, basically once a day, like for dinner. We did our breakfast and lunch in the college canteen itself. She used to come in the evenings between 6 and 7 p.m. When she reached the bus stop, she used to give me a call, and I picked her up. It was a usual day. I woke up at 8 a.m. and got ready for college. On the way to college, there's a tea stall. I ate a plate of puree, a cup of tea, and smoked a cigarette. Then I bought a few chewing gums, and after having one, I left for college. I had to prepare for a topic on that day. I made a presentation on diabetes mellitus and presented it in the seminar hall. At 1 p.m. I had my lunch at the canteen. Time went by after attending one class and another, and finally it was 5 p.m., I left college, reached my room around 5.30, and I was feeling sleepy, so I decided to take a nap. My phone rang, and I saw that the maid's calling. Picked up and told her that I'll be there in two minutes. I saw the time on my phone was 7.15 p.m., wore a jumper. It's always cold in Shillong, so I took my keys, an opened packet of cigarettes, and a lighter with me. She usually takes five minutes after the call to reach the bus stop, so I decided to smoke while I waited for her. As I reached the bus stop, I parked the bike and lighted a cigarette. As I smoked, I noticed all the shops were closed. 
It's not unusual as shops usually close at 7 or 8 p.m. I finished my smoke, but there was no sign of the maid. So I took out my phone, went to the call logs to give her a call. But to my surprise, I couldn't find her name in the call history. I was shocked and checked the time on my phone, and it was 12.15 a.m. I was scared to death and quickly took my bike and rode as fast as I can to my room. I was unable to sleep for the rest of the night. When I told anybody about the incident, or to my flatmates in the morning, they didn't believe me, and I told them that the maid didn't come that night. This is the most close to a ghost story that's ever occurred to me. Possible Demon Sighting The reason I call my demon sighting, I'll get into that later. I saw Mr. Balan's video on the Ammon's haunting, and the picture in the description of the ghost and demon fit the exact description of the apparition I saw. So before I saw the apparition, my parents, specifically my dad and my mom, would say, yes, it's true. But they'd say it was probably just nothing. My dad would complain about hearing breathing and walking as well as sighing and almost hissing. Then my mom, who doesn't really believe in the supernatural news, usually very serious circle, like, did you hear that? Afterwards, the second supernatural happening I witnessed was my brother, and it was on Halloween day after trick-or-treating. We had a window in our bedroom. It only opens from the inside, and when it closes, it closes really, really tight, almost airtight. We come back from trick-or-treating and just got ready for bread, and we hear the window cracking and it's opening by itself from the outside. We started yelling for Dad to come. Then it stops right before he comes and it closes. Then, a couple of years later on Halloween, I decide to film around the house at 3 a.m. See if I can catch anything on my camera, or prove them, if wrong. I see nothing for the main part, and I'm about to walk through the basement, so I open the door. He starts walking and moving his head. He kind of just appeared there with a bunch of gray fog. Very see-through at first, but then he completely materialized. The color changed some from gray, brown to beige. The apparition was a short man, no taller than a seven-year-old. He had pointy ears. I can only describe his face. It's looking exactly like... Nusratus. Nusratus? Must be a demon name. It starts walking up the stairs, and then it notices me. It looks worried and frightened. It's confused that I can see it, and it's having a hard time moving its face. The only thing I can do is move it, brown eyes around the room looking at the rest of the basement. When it started trying to move its mouth, like he was trying to speak, I yelled and shut the door and never saw anything supernatural again, and my old house. and I was the only one who saw it. My camera didn't catch anything. Years later, I saw Mr. Balin's video on the almonds haunting, realized the apparition I saw looked exactly like how the police described the two apparitions they saw. They have a picture that's supposedly of a real demon. It's a short, fat man made of fog walking up the stairs. He looks really happy and jolly. They have another one of a short beige woman at the bottom of the stairs, and she has yellow eyes and a mysterious smile looking at the camera. I don't remember what positions he's at at the bottom of the stairs. I don't really think about it that much, but realizing that this makes me a lot more scared, I try not to think about it too often. I don't want to give it attention, but yeah, that was the only supernatural encounter I had in my life. Has anyone else had such an encounter in their life? I was around seven years old, give or take, and I was at my grandma's house with my mother at the time. My grandma smoked, and the shop that she got them from was probably a five-minute walk there and back. One day when I was there, my mother and grandma went to the shop to get her some cigarettes, and I stayed at the bungalow owned by my grandma. This is where things get weird. 
I always kind of felt uneasy in this bungalow, but whatever, I was young and to be honest, quite unaware. I remember clear as day on this occasion where I was alone and there was a man in a wheelchair with me just in the front room. Now when I think back, I can partially build his face in my head, but nothing was unusual or scary to me. Such a bizarre experience now I think back as an older, matured individual. As I think we looked at each other and no words were exchanged, but I wasn't uncomfortable in my situation. Fast forward around ten years later, my grandma is a bit unwell, let's say. So I'm speaking with my mother and I ask why my grandmother's husband is in a wheelchair and how did he die? To this point, my mother says that he never was in a wheelchair and asked why I thought that. Obviously, I explained the event. She had no words. He wasn't in a wheelchair, so it couldn't have been him and no one's ever been in my grandma's bungalow in a wheelchair as long as she lived there. She asked this to my grandma to clarify. Given that I was now around 20 years on from this event, have no real backing or understanding of what that was, and from time to time I think about it with curiosity, as I'm not sure if I even believe in these sorts of things, but what else could that have been? I did end up going to see a medium when I was around 16 with a partner at the time and went in with the this-is-all-bullshit mindset. This also did backfire, as I was singled out in a room of around 45 people, and the woman told me a man was following me and he died in a car crash in the army. I said, must be wrong person, as I don't know anybody like that. To which she said, he's really close to you. I don't think I'm wrong. I later told my mother's parents about this medium experience, probably a week after. They were shocked as my granddad's best friend died in a car crash in the army. Obviously, I'd never heard about this, so I was none the wiser at the time. I wasn't sure if these correlated in any way, or maybe it was a coincidence, but always baffles me when I consider it all. Here are some things that happened to me when I worked at the Native Medical Center in my area. I'm a CNA, which means that I assist nurses and do all the patients' diaper changes, take vitals, showers, baths, linen changes, bring them food, assist them to the bathroom, and of course, when they unfortunately pass away, I prepare the body to be seen by patients' family members and or to be sent to the funeral home. Scratches on the window. One day I showed up to my shift and we had a patient pass away right before shift change. So it became my job to go into that room and start cleaning up and getting the room and patient ready to be seen by family. The nurse that I was working with was native and she explained to me that in her culture you open the window to let the spirit out to bring them peace. She then went over to the window, opened it up. We said a prayer and in the middle of this prayer, we heard a scream from the room right next door. So we run over to the room where the middle-aged patient explained to us that she was scared. We asked why. She told us that there were scratches and bangs on the window like someone was trying to get inside. We were completely spooked, but explained to the woman that everything was going to be okay. Brought her some snacks and a coffee and comforted her before going back to the deceased patient's room to finish getting the body ready to be seen. The linen closet. I was really busy one day getting patients showered and bathed and changing sheets. I went to the linen closet to get more sheets to make a bed, which was a very small room. I'm really used to people coming into the room to grab things while I'm already in there. Because we're all so busy, it didn't surprise me when somebody came in to grab sheets. I was holding the door with my foot while grabbing sheets out of the linen closet, so I assumed that I was very much in the way of this person that was coming to get sheets as well. I felt this person's presence clear as day and felt them so close that their breath was on my neck. I turned and said, oops, I'm sorry, didn't realize that there was someone there. I wasn't spooked at all, and this didn't feel like a negative spirit. The Lady in the Bathroom 
We had a very sweet lady with a cardiac issue admitted to the floor, and she was independent other than needing assistance with getting her IV pole into the bathroom with her. So I assisted her into the bathroom and shut the door to give her privacy. Then I left the room and waited for her to call for assistance. She didn't call for about 10 minutes, so I went to go check on her to make sure she was doing okay. When I entered the room, I heard a yelp from the bathroom, so I ran in through the door. She was leaning over unconscious, so I hit the code blue from the room. Fortunately, she ended up passing away from this event. The next day, the nurse that had worked with her and I went outside the room talking when we heard a woman scream from that room. We ran into the room and asked if the patient there was okay. They looked at us like we were crazy when we explained that we heard a scream. We were completely spooked. A few days later, I was walking in the hall and heard a scream once again. I went running into that room and another nurse was already in the room when I got there. We had both responded to the same scream and we both realized that there was no one there. We ended up calling a priest to bless the room. Having spiritual experiences in hospitals is not uncommon. I've worked in healthcare field for quite a while in different locations, and I have had experiences everywhere I've worked. I feel a close connection to the people that pass away and to the people I care for. I pray every day that we can have all peace when we're through.